folks. Welcome to a new season of Me and My Racket, a podcast hosted by Claire Bartlett, USTA Georgia TSR, where Claire talks to some of our great providers all across the state and tells their stories of how they're helping promote our great sport. Today on the show, Claire welcomes Keith Childry, the Director of Tennis for the Valdosta Lowndes County Parks and Recreation Authority and a member of a very proud and historic tennis community of Valdosta. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Claire Bartlett and you're watching and listening to me and my racket. And today on the show, we have Keith Childry. Keith, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how about you? Awesome, good, good. Well, hey, I'm gonna read a brief bio for our listeners and viewers about you, Keith. Um, So everybody, Keith is the Director of Racket Sports for Valdosta and Lowndes Park and Rec Authority and he has been since 2008, and he's an elite USPTA tennis professional and is in charge of the day-to-day operations, including hosting tournaments for juniors, adult leagues, and much more. And he currently serves on the USTA Georgia Tournament Selection Committee, as well as the GRPA uh, Editorial Board. And for those of you who don't know, it stands for Georgia um, uh, Rack and Parks Association. So Keith, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Well, well, how are you doing? What's going on in your world right now? Doing great. Just uh, enjoying the a little bit cooler weather we're having down here in South Georgia right now. It's been it's okay. been so hot this winter, but uh, it's, yeah. it was a welcome little bit of a cold front here. Yeah, I don't know about where you are, but it's sleeting and like snow and icing where I am right now. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm no. more I'm more than you, so I don't know. Uh, if y'all yeah. know. It's sunny and about sixty-two right now here. It's pretty oh, nice. Oh, okay, that sounds much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I wanted to get into your tennis story and kind of like how you got into tennis and when you started, and then like what's brought you up until this point in your career. So okay, thanks for asking. Um, so I. Uh, I grew up playing. My dad played in high school and some at a junior college. So he got me playing when I was about, uh, I stopped playing all the other sports, started playing just tennis when I was about 11. Mm -hmm. Um, Played through middle school, played through high school, USTA tournaments, all that, all that good stuff. Um, When I was 16, I started working at the country club at the tennis shop up there um, Mm -hmm. under John Hanson, just kind of as a part-timer. And um, while I was going to school at VSU, uh, or once I graduated high school and and I went to school at VSU. I, the, the job kind of evolved into a, like an assistant teaching pro. I started teaching some clinics and then started doing some privates. And then uh, I'd been there for about eight years while I was finishing up school. And then the position at Parks and Rec here came open uh, back in 2008, I believe. And uh, I applied for it and got it. And um, we've, we've been uh, we've grown from we, when I first got here, we had eight courts. It was a very old facility. Yeah. Uh, we had a splash project. It got upgraded. We had 12 courts with a new building. We just added six more courts on two years ago. So went from a, you know, part-timer at the country club now to run an 18 court facility. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congrats. And you've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. 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 Been Um, here for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, for those uh, people listening, you know, that are maybe directors themselves or they want to be directors, like what are your main goals and like your missions as you're running the facility? Um, for me, it's to offer tennis to, to people of all skill levels and ages. Um, we mm-hmm. kind of want to be a one-stop shop for tennis. We want to offer for beginners, you know, adults and juniors, intermediate mm-hmm. players that like to just play recreationally, and then hosting and having events, uh, tournaments for, for better players, or even uh, training for kids that want to go and play in college. So I think yeah. being able to, to offer everything and, and doing your – doing your due diligence in studying and, and uh, getting your certification so you can you can kind of help everybody that, that comes along in any aspect of life or uh, skill. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, what's it been like during the pandemic? I mean, we're still in it. Like, what are y'all open still at the moment? Like, what's going uh, on? Yeah, we're open back in uh, 2020 when it hit Parks and Rec. We closed for about um, six weeks, I think. And then once we open back up, it, is, it has been busier every week than the next. I mean, it's, we've, wow. we're wide open. We have another teaching pro that works here with me, and we're trying to hire another one now. We're, we're so booked up with privates and everything, and our courts are always pretty full, too. So we've been yeah. fortunate. Um, I think that's, that's one of the advantages of tennis when I go to our meetings and our continuing ed that, you know, tennis is an outdoor sport. You're not in, cl- in close contact with people, really. Um, you know, yeah. like the same closed space. All of our courts are open uh, outdoors. So. I think I think we've benefited really well from the pandemic, and uh, I think we've got a lot more people playing and, and being uh, living a healthier lifestyle because of it. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, has there been anything um, that y'all have done like during the pandemic, like anything um, different as far as like programming or anything that's worked really well that, you know, maybe like other um, places or communities would replicate or? Um, well, like I mentioned before, just having a programmer for all the skills and age levels um, yeah. makes a big difference. I think a big thing that is, that's always helped us out and I'm a big, big advocate of it. We're a parks and rec facility. We're publicly funded, but we don't mm -hmm. charge anyone any, anything to come out here and play just recreationally. So anytime you want to come yeah. out and play, if there's a free court, you can come and play. And I know a lot of facilities aren't, uh, aren't like that around the state or around the country. And we get a lot of compliments on that. People ask how much it costs to play and we, we tell them nothing. And they, their jaws hit the floor a lot of times, you know, they're like, what, you don't have to play to pay anything here. And we're like, yeah. no, nothing at all. And then, yeah. um, Having a great CTA, I think, helps out a lot, too. We are our tennis fund officer, mm -hmm. community tennis association. We've got a great group of volunteers. So anytime that Chip or the teaching program myself need anything, we can go to them. And, and whether it be funding for a program or or, mm -hmm. um, or helping hands or, you know, man hours, they're, they're more than willing to volunteer and help out with that. Yeah, great. Well, so who have been um, your mentors, you know, kind of along your tennis uh, journey and your career? Um, I mentioned John Hanson before. So mm -hmm. John, um, John was the, the pro at the country club for 30 some odd years. I think he's been the coach of Adasa State University for close to 50 years now. And he's won a few mm -hmm. national championships. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. But um, yeah. being around him from a teenager up till to my mid 20s, he, um, he mm -hmm. taught me a lot. He showed me a lot. And, uh, and really, you know, day to day showed me what it was like to be a, a a good teaching professional and a professional in your mm -hmm. field, you know, with what you do and how you act and, and your appearance and everything like that. So I had a really, I, I looked up, I had a really good mentor. Um, John's the person I look up <laughs> yeah. to and I, I use stuff that he's taught me over the years, every day when I'm on the court or even when I'm off the court. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd say John Hanson for sure. Okay, cool. What are your interests and hobbies like outside of tennis when you're away from the tennis court? Oh man, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm an avid bass fisherman. So that's what I do with all oh, my really? spare time. I, okay. I, I bass fish a lot and fish tournaments. And then okay. uh, I've got I've got two younger brothers and we like to we like to do anything active really we play flag football playing some tournaments and things like that so yeah. I, I'm pretty competitive so competing in anything really you know if it, yeah. if it, a score can be kept or, or anything like that I'm I'm up for that. Oh, that's funny. Well, uh, just to let you in, my dad was um, a professional bass fisherman like 20, 30 years ago. Nice. Um, so I, I know a little bit about it, but and he took nice. me fishing all the time, but I that's didn't know. Awesome. If he, if you had a favorite lure you like to use or like a favorite, you know, favorite and way right <laughs> now, right now for the last couple of years, probably been a chatterbait. That one's hit the, okay. hit the fishing world by storm. So we use that one a lot. Oh, yeah. and I'm going to get in trouble, but yeah, my other favorite hobby right now, I just got engaged a couple months ago. We're getting married oh, in, in August. So wedding yeah. planning, that's what's taking up a lot of my time right now. Wedding planning. <laughs> that's yeah. so funny. Oh my gosh. Shout out Lacey. So, Hi, Lacey. <laughs> that's funny well we are also engaged so i totally know how uh the that Congrats. goes a lot thanks thanks yeah, but the, yeah, the it's, thrills it's, and frills right yeah like outside your full-time job it's it's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of play definitely so definitely so yeah. i'm hoping we hit that little lull period where we have everything planned and we can kind of relax mm -hmm. a little bit here in the next month so yeah. Hopefully, awesome. hopefully well, it happens sooner than later. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, so at this point um, in the podcast, we're going to do some rapid fire questions. So okay. I'll just All ask right. you real, real quick. So if you could have dinner with one to three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Um, Federer for sure. Big Federer fan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Federer bust. Um, probably Brad Pitt, big Brad Pitt fan. And then. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's only two off the top of my head I can think of. Yeah, it's a tough one on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. A uh, surprising fact about yourself? Um. Oh gosh. Uh. I don't know. I've got, I've got a degree in history, a bachelor's okay. in history, okay. so uh, a yeah. big history buff. Like to like to read up on history. Yeah. Are you a Hamilton fan by chance? So one of the classes I took, I just went back and graduated a few years ago. One of the classes I took, mm -hmm. two of the classes I took. One was on Hamilton on the on the book that the play was written off of. So yeah. compared the play to the book, uh -huh. um, it was about fifty percent true what they did in the play compared to the book. Which yeah, yeah that's Hollywood. And then uh, right. and then my my senior class, we we got to do uh, we had to write uh, from a section on Hamilton. So the the okay. the play I'm okay with, but yeah. uh, the book and the the guy himself were amazing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, and then last night's dinner. 
Oh gosh, uh, leftover pizza. <laughs> okay. And then are you reading, watching, or listening to anything at the moment? Um, watching Lost in Space, the new season on Netflix. Really good show. Very, mm -hmm. uh, very intense. And then um, not really reading anything. I read a lot of fishing articles and uh, tennis mm -hmm. articles, but no books or anything like that. And listening, I uh, listen to a lot of podcasts, uh, true, crime, true crime podcasts, fishing podcasts, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's how I get my news usually too through podcasts. So I've okay. got something yeah. going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, lastly, are there any like initiative projects or anything y'all have coming up here in the next um, few months that you want to share or anything you want to promote? Um, yeah, two things. First off, I want to give a shout out to our other teaching pro, Chip Shade here. He does a great job. Mm -hmm. Helps me, uh, helps me keep everything going out here. And uh, he does a great job on court as well. And secondly, we have um, a team, adult team tournament here, like a weekend tournament, not necessarily like a league tournament. But okay. we basically, I've coached so many junior team tennis teams over the year, uh, over the years that we um, we wanted to kind of duplicate that event for adults. So February fifth and sixth, we're having an, an open adult team tournament, um, just like junior team tennis, uh, singles, doubles, mixed, uh, guys and girls, singles, guys and girls, doubles, and a mixed doubles game accumulation, mm -hmm. short sets, um, team that wins the most games wins. Um, it's, uh, it's on Serve Tennis. If anyone wants to show up and play, we'd love to have you guys. You can sign up through there. You can email me if you've got any questions. It's all NTRP, so it's a 3-0 team or a 3-5. Oh, we go 3-0 uh, up through 4-5. So we've already got um, four teams in 4-0, two in 4-5, and two in 3-5 right now, I think. So we have a pretty decent turnout right now. So hopefully some other teams will come and travel and play, and it's going to be a great time. We're going to have food trucks and everything here. So if you yeah. uh, can spread the word, we'd love to have you up. Yeah, for sure. We'll put this up on social media and spread the word. That's um, awesome. That'd be great. And, and thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, of course. And thanks to everybody listening and watching. Um, as you know, we're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the socials, and um, anywhere you find your podcast, too. So check us out there. And y'all have a great day and stay warm, and we'll see you later. Okay. Bye.